Look at that handsome face. It's uh, it's comedian Greg Warren. Hi, Greggy. And, Hi, Greg. Uh, Greg is at his home sitting in front of a bunch of photographs of famous Warrens. I see Warren Zevon. I see Leslie Ann Warren. I see Warren Sapp. Is that uh, Warren Harding behind your head? There? Warren G. Harding. Oh, uh, sorry. Tom. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Warren, the original Warren, Warren, is, uh, Beatty. Warren Beatty. One of the most handsome presidents. Warren there. Warren Moon, number one there. Mm. For the yes. Yeah. Yeah, Warren yeah. Beatty. Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, uh, and now, uh, Greg, you have a, a comedy special that's out there floating around. A couple of them. And you've got uh, Where the Field Corn Grows and yep. The Salesman. And they're found in two different spots. Where do you find The Salesman? That's on YouTube, uh, Tom. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, where the field corn grows? Uh, Amazon. Yeah. And this is the uh, the the corn season. Yeah. Mm. And uh, talking to you, I learned that all that corn I see in the highway is uh, is a uh, field corn, not sweet corn. Don't eat that, Tom. Don't eat that. That's not sweet corn. You can't. Okay. Sit. Yeah. You're not going to enjoy it. We had a little discussion about <laughs> sweet corn last week, and several people emailed me places to get good sweet corn, and I followed through. Oh, I, I Boy, love is there anything to, I love better? The, the corn pops off into your mouth. Oh, oh, man. oh. sweet corn. So good. so good. And tomatoes right now? Oh, mm. very, very, very good. Uh, what's our topic for today, Greg Warren? Uh, uh, Tom, we're going to talk about uh, Alcatraz. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. located uh, about a mile and a quarter off uh, the San Francisco coast. 22 acres in total. Uh, it was founded in 1775 by Juan Manuel de Ayala. Uh, and it was uh, it was deemed Isla de los Alcatraces, hmm. which is uh, loosely translated as uh, Isle of the Pelicans. Really? Um, there's no pelicans on Alcatraz. It's a misnomer. <laughs> uh, it was a lot like uh, when I was in, in in high school. We we called my uh, my friend Steve's car the Chickmobile. <laughs> uh, uh, huh. No no chicks no chicks in that car ever. <laughs> 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 not, not, not ever. Uh, during the gold rush, uh, we put a bunch of cannons up there to perfect uh, to protect uh, the U.S. from foreign invasion. We thought they were going to come try to get our gold. We never fired those cannons. Two hundred of them were up there. Whoa! Uh, later, it became a military prison. Guess who built the military prison? The military. The, um, the prisoners. The prisoners oh, built it. Oh, yeah. Which. Uh, I think it's a terrible idea, right? Yeah. Uh, all right, all right. Which one of you guys built the catapult? Is, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 I, I thought I saw that in the plans, Warden. <laughs> <laughs> or you built a you built a hole in the wall here? Yeah. What's going on? Yeah, there? There's chick. There's a, a four foot wide hole in every cell. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it, it, later, uh, it became a, a federal prison, 1934. Here's what was going on during the twenties and thirties guys, lots of crime, hmm. lots of crime uh, and a lot of bad guys. And a lot of them were good at getting out of prison. So they decided to build a, a maximum security prison at Alcatraz. Okay. Uh, hmm. and it was, it was only one, uh, prisoner per cell. And it, it was, a, a, each cell was a five by five cell which was uh roughly the size of my apartment in the lower east side of manhattan <laughs> <laughs> much more hope at Al alcatraz yeah. than that, uh, that apartment yeah uh, but, uh, and uh, it was uh it was a one to three ratio so for every three prisoners there was a prison guard wow. a, lot, a lot of guards there yeah <laughs> Every time I hear anything about a ratio, I always think, I don't know if you guys were like, when in my 20s, there was always some guy who, who was convinced the reason uh, he wasn't getting any action from the ladies was the ratio was all wrong. He's like, I'm moving to Boise, man. It's <laughs> one to four down there. You, you got to go to Boise. It's one to four. I'm like... Dude, I know you. You're going to have to get to about 1 to 45 before you get anything. <laughs> wow, two so girls for every boy. Remember that song? Two girls yeah. for every boy. boy. Da, 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 yeah. Boys, boys, going to Surf boys. City. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 uh, any of those places where that it, it exists for about uh, five minutes, then people figure it out. Uh, um, there was a lot of famous inmates in Alcatraz, uh, Al Capone was there. Mm -hmm. This guy is uh, one of my most interesting. Uh, Alvin Creepy Carpus Carpowitz. He was 
called Creepy Carpus because he had a sinister smile. He was uh, one of the leaders of the Barker Carpus gang. Uh, you guys have heard of Ma Barker and, oh, and yeah. her boys, right? Sure. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep, uh, he partnered up with Ma. The Barker uh, gang, they were the ones that they went around and they would spay and neuter all the animals, right? That was them? That's the Bob Barker gang. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, oh. My bad. <laughs> Confusing, you see. It is. Yeah, yeah, they did have the long microphones, though. <laughs> uh, I didn't see that one. Um, uh, uh, Alvin uh, got started early. Alvin! Uh, <laughs> not, not that elephant. Oh. But uh, he, yeah, he when he was ten years old, he was running with pimps, drug dealers, bootleggers, and gamblers. Whoa, ten? When I was when I was ten, yeah. uh, my mom wouldn't let me watch Speed Racer because it was too violent. <laughs> 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 Alvin uh, had uh, he was public enemy number one deemed by the FBI. Only three other people have had that distinction: John Dillinger, Pretty Boy Floyd, and Babyface Nelson. They were all shot dead. Uh, uh, Alvin got uh, he got uh, imprisoned. They, they, he was arrested. He was arrested by J. Edgar Hoover, which which sort of launched J. Edgar Hoover's career. Uh, incidentally. <laughs> When they arrested Carpus, uh, J. Edgar Hoover was there, and he said, uh, boys, put the cuffs on him. And none of the guys had brought handcuffs. That's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> boys. <laughs> hey, boys. <laughs> and, by the way, sorry, it was, and it was at an all-boys dance, funny enough. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they had... <laughs> J. Edgar liked the... Uh, yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, that, I see. Hoover yeah. left his cuffs in his other purse. Weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, um... In uh, the Carpus eventually, when Alcatraz shut down in the mid '60s, he got transferred to uh, uh, McNeil Island in Washington State, and uh, that's there was a pr federal prison there. And he met a young guy there named Charles Manson. Oh boy! And, uh, Up and coming. He taught he taught <laughs> Charlie how to play the guitar. Oh. Apparently, he was pretty good. All yeah. right. Hmm. He got out. Creepy Carpus got out uh, later in life, and. Uh, uh, he, he wrote a memoir, and his publisher was a woman named Ruth Bertelson, and, and they, they became close. Uh, and, and he mentored her young son until, quote, Is that right? The sociopathy of some of his advice to the child angered Bertelson. Yeah, yeah Ruth, yeah. you paired your son up with public enemy number one. <laughs> 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 Had it been public enemy number 54, sure, let them go scouting together. <laughs> but, uh, uh, Robert Stroud was at Alcatraz. You guys know who that is? Anybody? The uh, the Birdman, yeah. Yes, check the yeah. Birdman of Alcatraz. This guy uh, was was a bad apple. He uh he killed a, a prison guard or two. Um and uh, but he was he was a genius and when he was at Leavenworth, not Alcatraz, but when he was at Leavenworth, they let him have pet birds and he uh he learned a lot about birds and wrote a couple of books on how to cure canaries of diseases. Ooh. Wow. Oh. Get this uh, while he was at Leavenworth, you know, he was doing so much work with these birds, they let him bring in some bird equipment. Uh, but later they found out that some of it was not bird equipment. It was whiskey still equipment. <laughs> <laughs> birds got to have a good time, too, right? Yeah. Smart guy. Oh, was that, uh, the other, wasn't that a Burt Lancaster movie? Burt Lancaster played him. The bird, and uh, the bird from what man. I understand... He sort of made him a grandfatherly figure, and people say that is simply just not accurate. <laughs> he was a monster. <laughs> but but <laughs> was in the movie, was he doing the bird thing at Alcatraz rather than Leavenworth? Ah, uh, Chick, you want to take that one? I don't know. I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't remember the uh, the specifics of him having birds at, at Leavenworth as opposed to... Yeah, I think it was at Alcatraz, but w once he got to Alcatraz, there were no birds. Uh, hmm. Oh. George Kelly was at Alcatraz. You guys know who that is? George Kelly. Machine is gun? that Machine Gun Kelly? Machine Gun Kelly. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I can mention Machine Gun Kelly without quoting uh, my favorite uh, scene from a movie, Phil Hartman and <laughs> So I Married uh, an Axe oh, That's oh, yeah. so great. Yep. <laughs> Where he they're played all a prison guard. In this particular cell block, Machine Gun <laughs> Kelly had we called in the prison system. A bitch. <laughs> <laughs> One night in a jealous rage, Kelly took a makeshift knife, 
Shiv <laughs> and carve the bitch's eyes out. <laughs> Cafeteria straight ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You cut out some of it, thankfully. And, and now, yeah, I, did, I, did, I did cut out. It some gets a little graphic. Do, do you think the fans of the current recording artist Machine Gun Kelly are aware that there was a Machine Gun Kelly prior to this? Uh, I've listened to some Machine Gun Kelly, and if you're a fan, you're not aware of much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you're not aware that your fam favorite singer is pretty much a Blink 182 ripoff. <laughs> and do doesn't James Taylor have a Machine Gun Kelly? I think he does. Yeah. Song? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. That really? Sounds, that yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. I, was I, I remember he, I, he, he Gun says, "This is Gun no time for levity. <laughs> this is the story of Machine Gun Kelly." Oh wow! Yeah, and an early James Taylor album, as I recall, a very good one. But, uh, uh, my favorite thing about James Taylor is when Henry Phillips, our friend, said, uh, yeah, a lot of people say I uh, <laughs> I remind them of uh, James Taylor on Smack. <laughs> but at the time, uh, James Taylor was actually on Smack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, now, now, wait, who's the person that uh, didn't someone actually escape from Alcatraz? Good, uh, good question, Tom. You led me into my next uh, segment here. Uh, there were 14 attempts to escape Alcatraz, uh, 36 men in total. All were caught but three. Uh, in June of 1962, Frank Morris and the Anglin brothers, John and Clarence, escaped Alcatraz. These guys were pretty bright guys. They prepared for several months. Uh, they had uh, constructed some mannequins, dummies. Uh, they got uh, real hair from the barbershop. So uh, the prison guards thought they were in bed. They didn't uh, really start looking for them until the morning. Uh, they found a, an old vacuum cleaner and made a drill out of it. So they were able to drill some holes around vents. Uh, they gathered up 50 raincoats to make uh, a rubber raft. And they inflated... Uh, these uh, rubber rafts with uh, musical instruments, which uh, that's odd. I don't know how they did. Hey, we don't I, have air, guards, <laughs> well, what's that? Guard was like, oh, look at that uh, guy playing the trombone by those 50 raincoats. <laughs> 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 ah, seems fine. Yeah. <laughs> they, uh, they were able to uh, seam the stitch together, the, the raincoats and vulcanize them with hot steam pipes. They got that idea from magazines that were found in prisoner's cells. Again, if you're a warden and you see somebody reading Escapee Monthly, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, Tom, they, uh, they got out, uh, and uh, there's very strong currents around Alcatraz and very cold water, and uh, nobody ever found them. Uh, a paddle washed ashore, a couple of the, uh, the ra parts of the raft washed ashore, uh, the FBI says it's unlikely that they survived. Um, the FBI closed the case in 1979. The U.S. Marshal Service still has the case. There are some people that say they got out. There's some evidence. Uh, their mother uh, got flowers every year anonymously uh, on her birthday. Mm -hmm. um, her funeral was allegedly attended by two tall boys uh, wearing a lot of makeup, which uh, they thought were the Anglin brothers. Wow. I don't know. Boy George is six feet, so. Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he, he wore a lot of makeup. Yeah, this makes me feel uh, like a bad son. These guys went to prison for their whole life. Their mom still gets flowers every year. Yeah. That's on right. her birthday. Yeah. Yeah. They escaped yeah. from prison. You can't even remember to send me a little note every year on my birthday. <laughs> wow. Sorry, Mom. Uh, someone said they saw a boat that night out there. Oh, I saw uh, a, a white boat. boat. And then this is <laughs> interesting. <laughs> I saw in, in, uh, audio from that. I saw a boat. I saw a boat out there. Uh, That's great, Frank. <laughs> apparently, the FBI received a letter in 2013 from a guy that claimed to be John Anglin and said that the other two were dead and he was willing to trade. Um, he'd turn himself in if he could get medical attention. He said he had cancer. They didn't uh, present this letter to the public until 2018, and they didn't do anything about it. So hmm. there's a lot of... I would say if you go to a sporting goods store like an REI place and you see a a, a guy blowing up a raft with a clarinet, that that, that might be him. <laughs> yeah. Good, good point. Are there yeah. sharks in that water? I, they, they, they... There are sharks, Josh, but they're not the type that uh, bite. 
men. Oh, okay. They're like deep, deep water sharks. Everybody said the sharks, but no, they, 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 they wouldn't have got They them. nuzzle primarily. Yeah. Oh, nuzzle, nuzzle sharks. sharks. Yeah. Yeah. The old yeah. cuddling, cuddle. cuddling shark. Yeah, yeah. snuggle yeah. shark. Yeah. If, if a boat didn't pick them up, would the currents have taken them out to sea, or would, would it have taken them to the mainland? It, it You know, it depends. I mean, there's people that have made that swim. Like two 10-year-old boys made the swim. Whoa. So... But these guys are prisoners, and they're you know not in real good shape. Really, actually, Alcatraz was had the best food of anywhere in the prison system. They like to keep the guys lazy and fat. Wow. Um, hmm. Yeah, they, it was not a bad prison. Some people wanted to get transferred there. Hot showers. Uh, they played softball there, hmm. which hmm. that would be interesting. Uh, how'd you like to be the umpire that had to uh, huh. call call Machine Gun Cully out on a, a called third strike. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he became softball bat Kelly after that. <laughs> Alum aluminum. Uh, yeah. Aluminum bat Kelly. That'll hurt. Uh, Tom, I don't know if you remember this. In, in 64, Alcatraz closed and uh, a, a lot of Native Americans, there's a big, large Native American group that went and occupied uh, uh, Alcatraz. They said that uh, there was some treaty that gave them the right to unoccupied government land, and they were there for quite a while, and they wanted to make, like, I, don't, I think they wanted to put a museum or something there, and uh, Nixon kicked them out. It was it was a big deal. The hippies got involved. Jane Fonda went down there, uh, and, and Creedence Clearwater Revival was actually there supporting them. Wow. I don't remember that. Well, uh, you might remember the song that they, uh, uh, <laughs> they came up with there, uh, Who'll Start the Rain. <laughs> oh, yeah? uh, uh, I see because the uh, <laughs> Native Americans were involved. Again, certainly. again, who will yeah, start? start yeah, <laughs> right, right, right. Who will start the rain would be the Indian dance. Thank you very much. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yeah. is that the closer? <laughs> I, I was, I was hoping it might be. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that, we're be. not even. It works. The, it's haunted now. Like it's got to be haunted. Oh, no, great no. place for a casino. Oh, yeah. Take a well, boat over. Wouldn't that be fun? Well, well that, yeah, they were trying to develop into private land, uh, but it's, you know, it's, of course, it's it's owned by the National Park Service. You can yeah. go visit it. Uh, make your reservations early. Yeah. Uh, Every they, time they, I've tried like, to go, they've been sold out. Oh, really? Well, thank oh. you very well, much, Well, they, they didn't care for you, Josh. Now, Greg, am I correct in saying Rooster <laughs> Tea Feathers in Sunnyvale, California will be hosting Greg Warren live Thursday, August? That's right, August, not that far from Alcatraz. Yeah, Thursday, August 10th through Sunday the 13th. Then it's the beautiful Zanies in Nashville, Tennessee, Wednesday, August 16th. And then Friday the 18th through the following Sunday, it's the Stress Factory in Bridgeport, Connecticut. And then Tempe, Arizona. Wow. At the Improv, August 24th through the 26th. Greg Warren live. Yeah. Don't miss him. Be sure to get The Salesman on the YouTube. And uh, uh, the, uh, prior to that, the excellent, excellent comedy special called uh, Where the Field Corn Grows. Uh, the answer, of course, is in the field. But there's a lot more to it than that. Thank you, Greg. Bye, yeah, Greg. I love you guys. Handsome you as ever. You're Greg. the best. See you, buddy.